So in this series, I will be defining vectors like this with a variable name and this half arrow over top. And I will write them as a column of numbers. Now vectors can also be written horizontally or vertically or they can be enclosed in parentheses or carrots or curly brackets whatever but in this series I'm going to stick with this notation right here so in case you don't know what a vector is let's consider this arbitrary vector V and it has all the way down to it has n components to this vector so we would call this an n dimensional vector and we call it an n-dimensional vector because it has n components. So basically what I'm saying is this vector has n different numbers in a line. And that's why we call it an n-dimensional vector. If we had a vector u that was defined as 1, 2, we would say that this is a two-dimensional vector because there are 1, 2 components to this vector. So let's take a look at that vector 1, 2 so we can understand exactly what this notation means. Basically what it means is that each number in the vector represents the component of that vector and the direction of a given coordinate axis. So if we were to plot this vector on an xy coordinate system, what I'm saying is that it would go 1 in the x direction and 2 in the y direction. So if I map this out, it would hit 1 in the x direction and 2 in the y direction. So if we started at the origin and we went over 1 and up 2 and we ended here, the vector v would be the arrow starting from this origin and pointing to the ending point 1, 2. So there's two things that we can say about this vector. One is it has a magnitude. And what I mean by magnitude is that this vector has a size. It has a starting and end point, therefore it has a length. And if we said that that length of this vector is L, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for this length L, which are simply these, the sum of the squares of the components. So in this case, 1 squared plus 2 squared. And we can solve for L, and we get square root of 5. And we denote this as the magnitude of v with these two double bars is equal to square root of 5. Additionally, we can say that a vector has a direction. And we can think of the direction of a vector as its orientation in space or the line in which it is pointing. So in this case, this vector v is pointing in this direction along this line. In two dimensions, it's also easy to think about direction as an angle from the x-axis, but as we move into higher dimension vectors, this is more difficult to characterize by an angle. So let's consider another vector, v, and let's define it as the vector 1, 1, 1. So this is a three-dimensional vector because it has three components, and what this means is it has a component of 1 in the x, y, and z directions. So if I were to plot this on an x, y, z coordinate system, we said that this vector has a component of 1 in the x direction, 1 in the y direction, and 1 in the z direction. So if we started at the origin, and we came over 1, and then we went up in the y direction, a distance of 1, and then we went up in the z direction, a distance of 1, what we would have is a starting and end point. So the vector v is the vector starting from the origin and pointing to the end point, which is 1, 1, 1. So like we did in the previous example, we can say that the magnitude of this vector is equal to the square roots of the sum of the squares of the components. So in this case, 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. And once again, this is just Pythagorean theorem generalized to multi-dimensions. So we could say the magnitude of v is equal to square root of 3. And if we wanted to represent the direction of this vector, well we would express the direction in what's called a unit vector. So if I take the vector v 
and I factor out its magnitude, what I would get is the following equation, where this component right here is what we refer to as a unit vector. A vector divided by its magnitude is a unit vector, and it always has a length or magnitude of one. So what this represents is purely directional information. And this term represents the magnitude of the vector. So what we've done is we've broken up a vector into two components, its magnitude and its direction. So if we wanted to compute the unit vector or directional information of this vector v, what we would do is we would take v and divide it by its magnitude. We would have 1, 1, 1, and we would divide it by its magnitude. So whenever I divide or multiply by a vector, it applies that operation to each component. So what I would get for the unit vector of v is 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3 where this represents the directional information of the vector and this represents the magnitude. So once we start working with larger dimensions and we start having vectors with more than three or five or, or ten components, we can still apply these same ideas of magnitude and direction to these larger vectors. So I can generalize these equations to n dimensions where I can say that the magnitude of an arbitrary vector is equal to the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared all the way to the nth component squared and I can represent the direction of v as the unit vector divided by its magnitude as computed above. So this would look like v1 over magnitude of v, v2 over magnitude of v, and so on and so on. So don't let higher dimensions intimidate you at all because the equations and the way that we work with these vectors are the exact same. But the important thing that I want you to take from this video is that vectors have two components, a magnitude and a direction. So thanks for watching and I really hope you guys enjoyed this series. Uh, please give me feedback. Let me know if anything that I say is confusing or not making sense and I will make another video to clear anything up. Um, so thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you guys in another video.